Welcome to Final Fantasy Ultra Championship Edition. Let's try this one out. This is a Final Fantasy 1 ROM hack by Robert August de Meyer, a noted Final Fantasy 1 hacker with lots of changes to the game. Uh, definitely could be called a total conversion, I think, in my opinion, uh, just from preliminary looks at things. So we're going to take a look at a new game. Let's get a respawn rate all the way up. And already, check out the new jobs we've got to work with here. We've got Viking, Rogue, Monk, Ninja, Cleric, Warlock, Sage, Fool, which does uh, nothing, apparently, and Paladin. We'll go with the Paladin to start on this one. And we'll go again for uh, Esper after Astral Esper. Uh, noted Final Fantasy 1 hacker. Alright, let's go with the Viking, who is a physical tank and a half for our second one. Uh, big, big bruiser on the Viker. Viking. Let's go for Sulla with this one. And sorry again, Sulla, that I can't get three L's into your name. Alright, let's get some protective magic. Let's go for the Cleric, some white magic, this one can be uh, T-Hawk, T-Hawk is a notable uh, FF1 player, and I think we'll just have to go with uh, lowercase letters for T-Hawk, alright there's our friend T-Hawk. And let's go for a sage at the end. Uh, and this will be for... Oops, I missed my sage. Sage, I think, has access to a lot more magic. And this one can be ZZ for Zonk. Now let's go ahead and spell out Zonk because we have the letters to do it. All right, here is our party. Let's go. Check out Canaria. Now my paladin has the look of the Final Fantasy IV paladin. Here we have a little circle of sages here in Canaria, and they give us a little bit about our party. So the ninja can evade attacks and cast direct black magic. Yes, you can have those right away. You can have uh, magic given to you right away. Paladin can wear plate armor and big shields. They also <laughs> gets a great tank right there. Um, use hammers and direct white spells. Rogue is great at running away. More surprise attacks. And they tell you what kind of weapons they can use here. So we've got the Warlock casting Black Magic. And they can wear Staves and Scale Armor. Priest cast White Magic in Direct Spells, mostly Heals. Sage can cast all White and Black Spells, but less mana. Uses Staves and Cloth Armor. So that's what I'm going for, uh, the Sage. The Fool is a master of nothing. Are you sure you want one? The Wizard casts Black Spells, specializing in Indirect Magic, like Enchantments. That would be things like Temper and Confuse, etc. So we've got uh, magical shields here for our cleric. So let's see what kind of uh, magic we can pick up with that. This is Jack of all trades is a ranger, similar to the red mage from the first game. The monk, just a um, bearer beast, but also some indirect spells, white and black. So that would be an interesting one to try out. And we're back to our paladin there. So let's pick up an axe for our viking. And let's pick up a hammer. And, oops, I missed my hammer. Let's pick up a hammer for, uh, and see who can all equip the hammer. Because I'm pretty sure my cleric can equip the hammer. Uh, but let me see if, all right. Can T-Hawk also equip that hammer? Yes, so I can get another hammer there. Might as well equip the axe while I'm here. Because the paladin is similar to the true D&D &D, um, uh, paladin and, and the cleric similar to a true D&D &D cleric. Alright. One more hammer. And I actually should check, but um, I, let's, let's go ahead and say that our sage can equip um, staves. Let's try it. Alright, good. We can equip a staff there. Alright, and a hammer up front. Alright, so we got that set. Let's check out some magic. And you do have a dash in this game, so we do have access to the dash. 
And here we've got spell charges for everybody. I'll take a look at our menu. We have three spell charges for everybody at level one. Three spell charges for everybody at level one. So let's get T-Hawk set with Cure. And let's, let's see if T-Hawk can cast Holy. Nope, T-Hawk cannot cast Holy. Uh, let's see if my Sage can learn Holy, I'll bet. And let's also have my Sage learn Cure because uh, heal potions in this game are quite expensive. All right, and there we go. Now, I don't think Sulla can learn uh, Cure. I bet the Viking can't learn Cure. All right, let's check out some black magic. I'm hoping that I'm not making any um, irreplaceable mistakes or irreversible mistakes in my magic uh, layout. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, we'll learn a fire spell. And let's leave it at that for now. We'll go check out some of the enemies out here. I don't really have any armor yet to speak of. So it's just going to be throwing everything I've got at these guys. Notice fire does massive damage. And the pace of battle is sped up uh, significantly. So that is a change for the much better, I think. Although it's not quite as pretty um, as battles in the original game are. And you see my experience has been cut down a little bit. So uh, grinding, I think, is going to be a little tougher in this game. Endless grinding for, for basic levels going to be a little bit more difficult to do, so I think you have to use your wits a little bit more going through this one, and we have to just watch the balance curve of this game as it goes through. Axe is uh, not very accurate there for my Viking character, but that's okay. I'm going to try to pick up a level here outside of Canaria before we head up towards the Temple of Fiends. Uh, I'm not sure if we still have mad ponies in this area. That would be an interesting one. Let's see what we can pick up here. Uh, but having the spell charges there is going to be really helpful. Ugh, man. Fire is a pretty reliable way to deal some good direct damage. And massive direct damage. Also noticing enemies seem to be having, and this was, uh, was given away in the readme, uh, more enemies seem to have more hit points and, and higher defense, higher absorb. So it's harder for the, the weakling characters like those mages with the staves to uh, to get good solid hits on them. I think I, oh, I have one more fire charge. And because heal potions are so expensive, I, uh, I do want to stock up on my cure, uh, my cure spells. And I do have the one holy spell on the off chance that I run into, uh, not the off chance, it's a chain, on the, on the pretty likely chance that I run into some nasty undead. Let's go ahead and pick up that level before we stay at the inn. Let's go ahead and grab that level. This should uh, get us there, I think. Although I'm out of spell charges for my sage. And I think the sage likely will get fewer spell charges overall. I think that's what's in the description. Is that the sage's drawback is that uh, he gets access to all of the black and white magic in the game, but uh, falls behind in terms of number of spell charges. So I'll have to hope that my Viking and his massive direct damage can uh, carry us through. Alright, here's the big level up at level 2. You notice our, our hit points really shoot up. I don't have any armor yet to speak of, so that's going to be how I spend my money from this level. Let me see how much the inn is. It is 10, so I'm going to do that after I armor up. I'm going to save 10 after I armor up. Okay. And I'm going to see who can all equip the big one. Um, I'm pretty sure that my paladin can. Armor I need. Okay. 
And he cannot, but my paladin definitely can. Let's try this scale armor for my viking. Alright, viking can equip the scale armor. Can any others equip a scale armor? Yes, the, the cleric can. I'm betting the sage cannot, no. All right, so I'll need one more scale armor for my Viking. My Viking, and let's pick up some cloth armor for my sage down there at the bottom. Let's armor up. And what kind of absorb are we looking at? 12, six, six, and three is our absorb ratings. I'm gonna pick up a shield as well, just one shield. Uh, that'll be for my tank character, but I'm just going to see <laughs> if uh, my Viking can equip it for future reference. No, he cannot. Can my cleric? I wonder if the cleric can, since it's more. Yeah, it's more akin to a D and D cleric that is a little bit more battle ready than uh, the white mage in Final Fantasy One, the vanilla version. All right, so let's add that in, and let's do it. Let's head on. There we go. So I don't have any healing potions yet. I'm just at level two, but I have three characters who can cast healing spells. So I'm hoping that uh, with that level up, we're able to do a little bit more damage, take the damage a little bit better. Yeah, 10 is not enough to kill them, but 16, a critical hit with the staff. Nice job. And 14 from my tank at the front. So we have a not as, not as physically bruising, uh, character at the front, but someone who's just meant to take hits. Okay, there's Garland hanging out waiting for us. But I'm going to check out the rooms down here. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, a monster strike first with the Grey Wolf. This is going to be a runaway type battle. This is going to be a get out of here battle. So let's do that. Let's get out of here. Let's see if we can. So far, I have not seen anything that uh, would suggest that it's an inescapable battle. Uh, in the ZZ hack, of course, the battle, there's a prompt that tells you at the beginning of the battle if it is um, inescapable. It'll tell you right away. Can't escape. And let's try a charge of holy against the bones. Really solid damage against the bones. Now the question is, can the rest of our characters do enough damage to that creep? It'll all come down to what the Viking can do, really. No. To see if we could take that creep down in uh, one round. Yeah, there's 33 from the Viking, so the creep's got a pretty solid hit point base. Um, thankfully, it attacked my paladin there that last round. It just did one damage. Could not get through his, his pretty big absorb big absorb of 12 and this should be hopefully a pretty lucrative battle yeah 68 and 48 so gold is uh, definitely deflated in this game that's okay and those are going to be important because the cure potions are much more expensive in this version than they are in the vanilla version uh strike first on the zombies let's see if i can get through this one without needing to use a charge of uh holy uh, you notice that the hammer, look at the hammer's doing critical damage to the zombies. That is an excellent touch from our friends at uh, TSR, former TSR, currently Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons, because uh, undead enemies, of course, um, are they, they have sort of a weakness, or you get better damage when you're using uh, blunt-type weapons. Cleanse Potion is the new uh, pure potion, uh, because those blunt weapons... 
Uh, I'm gonna try to get away from this one. That's a lot of, uh, of creeps, and creeps have a lot of hit points. Blunt-type weapons do more damage to things like zombies and skeletons because that just makes intuitive sense. So, nice job on that. Hats off to Robert August de Meyer, the program of this hack. And if you want to find out more about this hack, I'll put the link in the description to the video. That link will be in the description. I'll use another holy charge here because I don't think unless Garland has turned undead, I don't think my holy charges will do any good. And 28 damage, that's a nice uh, round one with the creep. I could use a fire spell and take him out, but... I'm going to save that last charge and see if I can use that fire spell against Garland. There we go, on the 8 damage attack. That will work. Uh, there's a level up, alright, but it's a small hit point level up, you notice. Uh, from one, 1 to 2 we get the, the big hit point level up, and 2 to 3 you get a much smaller hit point level up. That's consistent with the vanilla version of the game. And you also notice we did not point out, um, but it is in the readme to this game, that um, there is uh, no mystic key locked doors here in the Temple of Fiends. There's a bronze shield, this little step up for my shield bearing characters. There are no, uh, no mystic key locked doors. I can do critical damage with my hammers, so let's do it. I can get an almost guaranteed one-hit KO for two of my characters every time. Look at that, 142 at level 3. That's very interesting. I love it. But the Mystic Key opens fewer doors in this hack, according to the README file, so the at least that part of the of the map has been remade, or, or the, the route of the game has been altered, in that the Mystic Key doesn't act as quite as much of a gate, or it, or it means that... Uh, it's fewer, less backtracking, I should say, less backtracking once you do pick up that mystic key. You're subjected to less backtracking. Uh, Monster Strike first on two creeps is not good. This actually could be really ugly because they could act, they could take out Sulla there. Sulla is in danger of dying. Okay, let's go get away this round. Good, I'm going to use one of my cure spells. And it heals a pretty good amount of hit points, which is good. For this part of the game, anyway. Uh, and I noticed there was something blocking uh, Garland this time, so looks like we come in from the side. This is uh, an impenetrable wall here. So you do have to walk around the side, and I'm, I'm wondering if that was put in there because uh, the programmer wanted you to see that uh, you could walk around and get into those rooms that normally would have been locked by the Mystic Key. I don't know if that's the case. That's just a guess. That is just a guess. And look at the uh, look at the level two charges already. Two level two charges. Um, at just level 3. So magic, we already can tell, is going to be a much more important part of this game. Yeah, and he has a level 2 charge as well. So I'll have to see what kind of magic I can equip on my Viking. So we're going to take on Garland and see what Garland says. Looks like that was left uh, character by character. Exactly the same as the vanilla version, uh, or at least... Uh, at least the gist of it, but you impertinent fools, I, Garland, will knock you all down. That is definitely word for word right out of it. And, uh, oh, except the dis it's Prince. No one touches my Prince. I didn't notice that. It's not no one touches my Princess. No one touches my Prince. So, uh, we already, we have a, a change in gender of the character that we're going after here. So let's see what we can do. It's just going to be fighting all around, curing as needed. And I have a couple charges of fire to use on Garland, hoping that uh, they can get through whatever defense he has. 50 damage, so you notice they're doing much less damage than it did to the imps. So that tells me Garland definitely has some magical defense. Which only makes sense, Garland is a boss after all. 11 from my hammer. 
another 50 from fire. Let's see if the axe can get through that uh, that defense a little bit. He, so he's got two hits. That's that's good. All right, Garland, Garland, Garland. So Sage is out of offensive magic and magic altogether. So he's just going to be swinging his staff, which is probably going to do one damage if he even hits, which it did not that round. So for the rest of this battle, I'm going to be holding down the A button. Wish me luck. Sulla just barely survives the attack. Three damage. So we did get uh, we did get through his we got through his absorb, which is good because if you do more than one, that means that you rolled higher than their absorb rating. So that must have rolled on the very very top end of the staff's damage uh, possibility. See so that that did one. Um, this game has a minimum of one damage on a successful hit, so that means that it rolled uh, equal to or lower. Then his evade, or then his absorb. Sulla does die right there. Uh, that's unfortunate. That's a nice dead Viking sprite, by the way. I don't know if um, the designer of this hack had to build a dead Viking sprite. Obviously, the standing Viking sprite looks very much like that in uh, Final Fantasy IV. And I'm thinking I probably should have used a cure spell from my T Hawk on the Viking. I was hoping that the battle could be over, but I've never you're never sure when you're playing a hack just how much uh, boss's hit points have been increased. Garland's seems to have been increased significantly. But looking at the damage he's been doing, I don't think anybody right now is in danger of a one-hit KO outside of uh, nonsense with two hits, both going critical. Uh, Esper could be in the danger zone right now after that one, so I'll cast a cure spell for him. And it looks like T-Hawk will also be in the danger zone. Unfortunately, the Viking was uh, doing the most damage, so he was the one I would have liked to have lost the least. Because these hammers are not doing an excellent job of getting through Garland's defense. But we do get the kill. 100 points. Um, let me see uh, if he got that. 170. 170. Okay, so... The dead character, here's something to note, the dead character did get the experience. So your experience is going to stay even in this hack as it does in some other FF1 hacks. Not in the vanilla version, of course. Kiki. Kiki. And here's our prince. What's our prince say? So you're the light warriors. Thank you. That's pretty similar to what Princess Sarah says. Alright, so we're going to check out Conneria Castle, and then we're going to call it a video. We're going to see what everybody's saying around here. We do have a, a bridge ordered to be built to the northern continent. That looks like that's maybe the queen, uh, Queen Jane, I believe. I uh, don't know if she's mentioned by name in this particular version. Okay, that is it. there it is. So that text was changed consistently. Thank you for rescuing the prince. That would have been a pretty sloppy hack job had it not been changed. But of course, this is a much better job than that. All right, so we've got to see if we can find that prince because we found the queen. Let's see if we can find the prince because normally you talk to both of them. Oh, Prince Sander. Prince Sander is his name. So a slight change in the story. We don't have Princess Sarah and Queen Jane. We have Prince Sander and Queen, we're not quite sure. My brother is back safe, so maybe that is uh, Princess Sarah. The sprite certainly looks like her. Certainly looks like Princess Sarah. And we have a vanishing, uh, vanishing sprite. Now you see me, now you don't, and gone she is. Okay, there's a hint to Garland uh, once being um, a member of the King's Guard member of the Knights of Caneria, but uh, he does go to the bad. Too bad. Uh, that's consistent, by the way, with the vanilla version. You have to look around a little bit to find someone to tell you that. Um, and it's, it's pretty hard because the dialogue is pretty bland. Uh, so the treasury was locked um, with the key. So let's see if these ones are consistent with the mystic key. Okay, good. is consistent with the mystic key there. So we have a bridge ordered to be built. 
I haven't actually found Prince Sander yet. And I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong places. For this Prince Sander, we've got the princess. And Queen Jane is in this room. But it's just, uh, or it's just the queen in that room. So Prince Sander might, uh, might not be around. Well, then, I suppose any, um, any key kind of item that we would need, we might be picking it up in a different part of the game. So let's go check out the bridge and finish out part one of what is sure to be a fun and lengthy Let's Play series. Thank you for watching. If you did like the video, be sure to give me the thumbs up, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button if you care to, uh, especially the comments I get on the videos uh, and on Twitter. If you'd like to say hi to me there, where it's the same as my channel name, active underscore ATE, I would love to hear from you as this series goes on and as every series goes on. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you next time.